my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be breaking down and deciphering Roger Schmidt's 4231 system in the game FC24. Of course, as for always, if you do enjoy a video like this, hit that like button, subscribe. That would be goddamn appreciated by yours truly. Of course, we will be discussing, you know, the tactical styles of play, the different instructions for various players and whatnot. So, without further ado, let's hop on into the goddamn video. So taking a look at the 4231 system, of course it is a 4231 narrow. Therefore, I've made the two wider attacking midfielders into left and right midfielders respectively. So therefore, it is going to be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two DMs, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then of course, one striker. So guys, moving on to the tactics, and I think the tactical vision that suits what Benfica tried to do and display on the field in real life is kick and rush. Now, I will try and explain this in the best possible way I can. Kick and rush is essentially one of your centre backs, one of your defenders, maybe even a DM, collecting the ball from a goal from a goalkeeper restart or, or something like that. So, you know, quite a deep position in your half of the field, and then looking to try and play that long ball in behind, looking for your forwards to make those runs in behind, trying to exploit the opposition's backline with the space in behind. Now, in saying this. Benfica also looks to try and compact the midfield. Now, it's very hard to replicate both styles of play. Compacting the midfield is essentially, you know, the, the wider midfielders drop in a bit more, get a bit more narrow, allowing for a bit more compactness, essentially, for the ball to play when progressing the ball forward. So, you are trying to also incorporate that. So, essentially, you don't necessarily always have to play those long balls in behind. Sometimes, you can look to play those long balls into those wider sections for your bombing on fullbacks, or maybe even just looking to play it a bit short and, sp and string together those five yard passes more centrally. So you can look to more or less incorporate all of that. But I've gone for kick and rush as I think more times than not you can look to try and play those long balls in behind, obviously looking to try and exploit the opposition with. As for the defense and the defensive style, it's set to press after possession loss. Now when Benfica turn the ball over, they implement a very aggressive widespread press, which is essentially why I have gone with the team with being set to 70. Now this will obviously spread your, your front line out, your front four out quite a lot, but at the same time, they'll still be very proactive and reactive to the potential passes that might be zipping in and around them, allowing for them to potentially intercept and then turn the ball over into a counter-attacking situation. As for the depth, Obviously, it's set to a high line, set to 70. This does help in and out of possession, of course. It will also force your forwards slightly higher along with the midfield and, of course, the defensive line. This, in turn, will allow for your wing backs slash wider or your full backs to get slightly higher up the field and be a bit more of an attacking presence in those wider channels. Of course, when we get to the offense, which we will soon enough, you'll see that it's a very narrow, compact system when going forward with the ball. So for the ball to play, it is set to long ball, like I was explaining earlier with the kick and rush approach. The long ball approach is a necessity in certain moments, but at the same time, you don't always have to play that long ball in behind. It can be the likes of a quick short pass into the midfield, the likes of uh, a Neves or maybe even a Florentino. They can get on the ball and then look to try and progress it quite nicely, a bit more centrally. And you can look to string together a few five yard passes in the central areas of the field. As for the chance creation, again, it goes hand in hand with the kick and rush approach, but it is set to direct passing, allowing for your forwards to make those runs in behind or maybe even your front four to make those runs in behind, trying to penetrate the opposition's back line. As for the width, I've set it to 25. Now, this is the narrow, compact structure that I was trying to explain earlier. And more so, the 25 width in the front line does allow for a nice, compact structure centrally and allow for the interchangeability of positions in certain moments. Likes of Angle Di Maria, he starts on the right-hand side. He might interchange with Rafa in certain moments. And essentially, what this does is it confuses the opposition um, their, their defensive structure because they don't know if they should potentially go with an Angle Di Maria more centrally or look to try and a man mark the likes of whoever's drifted it into his position. So it does allow for a bit more confusion, but in turn, it helps you out nonetheless. As for the players in the box, I have set it to eight, allowing for that front four, that dangerous attacking front four, to be able to all be in and around that attacking third. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, I've set it to four. Now, moving on to the instructions and starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, Trubin has been a very, very, very good goalkeeper for Benfica so far this season. I will say that I've heard countless good things about him. So, in order for you to replicate his role and his style of play, sweeper keeper is essentially all playing a hard line. You would require the goalkeeper to be proactive with reading the game, making sure if there is a potential 
over the top through ball that is played he is being ready and reactive to what he can potentially try and do to try and prevent a goal scoring opportunity for the opposition there henceforth sweeper keeper is a necessity as for the saving on crosses he is also very good at claiming those aerial balls when they are whipped into the box allowing for him to alleviate the stress on the the the, the defensive line as for the defensive line we've got the likes of Otamendi as well as Silva now I do know that both of them are very good ball playing sense backs they do look to try and progress the ball into the midfield in certain moments allowing for one of the DMs if not sometimes both of the DMs to drop back into the center back roles so you can try and do that but Otherwise, I would suggest that you set their instructions to normal. You don't really need to change too much. And manually, when on the ball, you can look to try and drive with them into the midfield. As for your wing backs or your full backs, they are set to join the attack as well as overlap, hugging the touch lines, creating a lot of the space and the pace down either flank, allowing for them to be in a lot of space more times than not, especially with that nice compact central um, unit, you could say. Uh, in, in the middle of the field so it does allow for them to have a bit more space on the outside of things as for the defensive positioning i've set it to stick to position as you'll see here for the likes of burnett he's got the same role as well into the midfield our double pivots this is a, an essential point and part of what the likes of roger schmidt tries to implement and get out there in order for his tactics to be a success the double pivot has to be very very solid and be able to read the game very well so We've kind of created like a hybrid type thing because you can't actually create the ability for your double pivot to drop into the back line. It's, it's very stupid that FC24 have removed that, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll try and bear with it. So for the likes of Cockatoo, he is a bit more of the box-to-box -box attacking player of the, 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 the double pivot, allowing for him to have a bit of a deeper role, but at the same time, if needed and required, getting a bit higher and trying to support the offense. So for the defense behavior, he is set to balance as well as the attacking supports set to balance allowing for him to be a bit more of that box to box player in fact all of his instructions are set to the base set of instructions you don't really need to do too much with the, this double pivot if required and needed the fullbacks out of position you would require either side of the the double pivot to shift into that left back or that right back role and look to try and cover that area of the field as for the positioning freedom for the luxe cockatoo again set to the its base set of instructions you don't really need him doing too much on the offensive side of things you don't need him you know having that free roam role dropping out of position breaking the structure of it so essentially you just need him to stick to position and make sure he is doing his job very effectively as for the likes of florentino slightly different role but again more or less set to the base set of instructions apart from two things one being the stay back while attacking now essentially like i said earlier the double pivots there'll be one of the the two in charge of covering the back line and we've selected florentino to do this so therefore he is going to stay back while attacking now essentially what would be best is if he could potentially drop into that back line every now and then allowing for a bit more and a bit better coverage but we can't do that so therefore stay back while attacking is going to be essential as well as him being the deep line playmaker from the goalkeeper restarts and whatnot you would want him to be able to drop between the defenders or you know drop a bit deeper and collect the ball from a goalkeeper or one of the two center backs and then look to try and progress it further on into the midfield onto the likes of Rafa now essentially he can play as a center forward slash as a cam we've got him set up here as a an attacking midfielder but he does vary between the two so for his role as that attacking midfielder you want to have a defensive support set to basic you don't really need him always staying high up the field you do need him to sometimes drop a bit deeper link up a bit more with the likes of florentino and cockatoo or or whoever you have in that double pivot as for the support on crosses again he can look to hang on the edge of the area look to try and help facilitate the pace of play or potentially look to stay forward making those runs in behind every now and then as well for the positioning freedom i've set him to free roam now this helps him vacate that number 10 role quite efficiently and effectively allowing for the likes of a joao mario or maybe even an angle di maria to drift more central and you more, more or less look to try and interchange positions every now and then as for the inceptions i have set it to normal so now moving on to your wider midfielders both di maria as well as joao mario have very similar roles we'll start off with the likes of angle di maria his role is very similar but less defensive so for the defensive support you want him to have a basic approach you don't really always require him to drop deeper supports the the potential fullback or the defense sometimes he can do that and he does it very effectively other times looking to hang slightly higher up the field and be a bit more of an attacking threat as for the chance creation it's set to cut inside as well as come short now this helps create that compactness more centrally allowing for a bit more space for your fullback to run into down either flank as for the interceptions, I've set it to normal. And then finally, the support on crosses is set to balance. Now, with the players in the box being set to eight, naturally, 
the likes of Di Maria, Rafa, and Joao Mario will join the likes of Cabral in that attacking third more times than not. But if the opportunity is there to potentially hang on the edge of the area and try and facilitate and cross or create other opportunities, he will look to try and take that as well. As for the likes of Joao Mario, so as you can see here, a very similar role, but again, slightly different, more defensive. You want him to drop a bit deeper, help out the likes of Bernat a bit more, as well as just like with Di Maria, balanced for the crossing runs as well as normal interceptions. And then finally, we have got the likes of Cabral, one of my favorite players to try and sign in career mode. I don't know, maybe it's because he's somewhat, he's, he's recently got his, his new star head and whatnot, but he is very, very good. He's a, a good rotational piece to have in your career mode if required, obviously. So moving on, I'm waffling. He's here to stay central and be a target man, obviously linking up quite effectively with the players just in behind him, being that strong physical force that can also look to make those runs in behind. Naturally, with the direct passing being set to be on, you will require him and he will naturally look to try and pe penetrate the opposition's backline with those runs in behind. But again, if he's not looking to do that, he's looking to be a bit more of a natural target man. He can definitely hold up the opposition defenders and link it up very well with the players in and around him. As for the interceptions, I've set it to normal. And then finally, he is told to stay forward, being an outlet ball for a potential ball over the top from one of your center backs. So there you have it, people. That is how I would replicate Roger Schmidt's 4-2-3-1 system in the game, FC24, as for always. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, hit the bell notifications for any further videos that will be coming out, and we've got quite a few coming out this weekend, so stay tuned for that. That'd be great. Honestly, mad love, mad appreciation. Out of 10, I had a lot of fun replicating the, these uh, instructions and using this team and trying to, you know, make sure it was doing the things it's supposed to be doing. So trying to factor that out and trying to factor in the effectiveness of this lineup out of 10, I would probably say it's an 8.5. I, th I think that's a very solid um, number to go with. I think it describes the amount of enjoyment that you can get out of a formation and set of tactics like so. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm out.